Hello Academy member, and thank you so much for tuning in to myself and Dante. Uh, my name is Dion Taylor. I am the director of the movie Fatal, which stars two-time Academy Award winner Hilary Swank, Michael Ely, Mike Coulter, and Damaris Lewis. And I am very, very excited to have my brother, Mr. Dante Spinati, two-time Academy-nominated cinematographer and um, my close friend. And Dante, how are you today, man? I'm great. Thank you for inviting me to this. Let's talk a little bit about Fatal. This was a special movie for us because Dante got to revisit Los Angeles and photograph it again after 20 plus years. Dante, what did you, what's, what's your thoughts on being back in LA and shooting? I felt great because LA to me is uh, possibly the most important visually, uh, most fascinating location you can think of for a movie. It allows big vistas, it allows very strong character location everywhere. The, the whole different people, the different people that lives in this town. So long live Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I would say that, you know, it was an honor for me to watch you shoot in LA. Um, just being a fan of Heat and, and so many of the other films that you've touched and, and, and lit. Um, but, you know, this movie was a little bit different for both of us based on the fact that unlike some of the bigger films, this movie was independent and we did have a lot of budget constraints. This was a movie where me and you basically were averaging 70 to 85, sometimes 90 setups a day. How was that for you, you know, going back to the world of like Manhunter where there, there is no tomorrow, like we got to go right now and, and you got to get it done. How, how was that for you? Uh, yeah, you go, you go and you have at times a limited amount of time. And what really helps in a situation like that is, uh, of course, your experience. I got to say, your capacity of bringing enthusiasm on everybody working on the movie. And the fact that I could refer, come to you and say, hey, you know, Dion, we could do this. Uh, how about doing this? We got half an hour or whatever. Why don't we do it this way? And knowing that your yes or no was totally reliable was a key, a key component of this. Yeah, I mean, it's a different world when you make independent films and it's a different world when you, you know, you know there is no tomorrow, there is no reshoots. One of the most challenging scenes for me and you on this film was this beautiful scene on the beach. And we basically originally had a day and a half to shoot a exterior shot of the beach and an interior shot of the beach house. Oh. And you said, Dion, we have to shoot this scene in the natural sunlight and we need to shoot this scene over the course of three days. And I remember going, okay, who's gonna be the one to tell Dante we can't do this? <laughs> and um, after me and you talked about it, and I understood what you were saying. We adjusted everything we could in the film to make this happen. And just so people understand what we're talking about, let's show the clip, which is uh, Michael <laughs> Eatley discovers that his wife is cheating on him. And he decides to go into the beach house where they are actually cheating. so surprised.
And then you did it. You went back to your car, got a gun. You went back to that bedroom. And you killed them. So as you think about this scene, Dante, what was your thinking behind the light here? Well, you know, I think uh, the key element of this that we discussed was that this is a kind of a surreal scene, right? This is what the um, Hillary's wank as a detective is trying to put into Michael Keeley's mind, right? As, a, right. Uh, as if it had really happened. So, I mean, the tricky part of scenes like this is really to make a plan. You know, some of these things are shot at night when we don't see the big window in the bedroom. Uh, right. That's night. We had a big light in the middle of the beach, exactly from the same direction where the sun was coming from. There is one shot at the end where we can see the real sun, you know, light in the actors. But I had to go into the night. I couldn't ask you to just shoot for two hours for sunset and then wrap and go home. <laughs> we had to figure out a way to, you know, be ready to uh, have the, all the equipment ready to go and, and put a big light replacing the sun in the middle of the beach and keep shooting, keeping those magic moments for the wide shots. I think in the whole scene, there are a couple of occasions like that. And again, the fact that the scene was uh, not real really gave us some opportunities to go for some really surreal magic lighting, I like the look of the, the window at sunset with all those clouds outside and the, the three people standing in bed. The fact that at the beginning he sees them reflected in the mirror. But in that shot, we don't see the big window. We don't see outside. So we could shoot that when it was dark. Great. Yeah, I would agree, man. And one of the things I thought was absolutely incredible that you were able to do is to do this practically. I mean, that is really the sun going down and that is really the lighting in that room. And uh, I remember walking the beach with you for over an hour, trying to decide which one of those beach houses the sun would hit the correct way. And when you see it all put together, I think this scene in the film is arguably one of the most beautiful scenes I've actually seen captured on camera, especially when you talk about dealing with black skin, black people, uh, it's just beautifully done, man. So bravo to you for that. The next scene that I think we should definitely discuss is a giant action sequence with two-time Academy Award winner Hilary Swank. This scene that we're getting ready to discuss is just crazy. It's just, it just, it's when the movie turns left and everyone goes, oh my God, what's happening? And the scene is basically when the bad guys grab Hilary Swank they're gonna take her to a bathroom because she's actually acted as if she's sick and she needs a moment. They want information from her. So they drag her to this bathroom. So let's watch the scene really fast on what happens here. And then let's talk about how hard it was to put that scene together and what you were thinking when we shot it. You know, like was. stop playing with me. Hurry the fuck up. Good? Yeah, I'm all right. Man, hurry up and bring her ass back. <laughs> Bump! <laughs> Bump! Oh, shit. That scene was incredible. This is a scene in a movie where audiences go crazy. They've lost their minds. Is Hillary Swank shooting full loads on camera. 
you don't get any better than that. Now, Dante, as we were putting that scene together, I don't know if you remember, this was a 19 hour day for us. It's hour 19. The fire marshal is kicking us out of the loft that we're in. They're telling us that we have 30 minutes to get these last shots that we need, which is Hillary in the bathroom, getting a gun, coming out and going down the hallway and shooting a gun twice to actually, you know, get the actor time and Turner. And we have about maybe 13 setups to do in 30 minutes. Yeah, last day of the uh, movie, right? Last day of the movie, so we can't come back. Yeah. Dante, tell me what you were thinking during this scene, man, and, and, and how you were able to put that together. That was a great day. That was, I didn't like it that day, but now that I think about it, I go, man, that was a great day. Well, you know, the first thing to say that I would like to say here is that that is the beauty of making movies like this, which are independent, because now actors inspire you. But just looking at the face and the way Hillary moves, uh, that would suggest how you shoot the scene, how you better tell the story of this lady. I remember heavily relying on the practical, on existing lights. So I think basically in the bathroom, we see two things. There was just a, a light on the top of the ceiling that I remember of, or one on top of the mirror above the sink, something like that. Yeah. Yes. This beautiful static I'm shot that our Rosenfeld executed. She comes in and out of the stoplights, you know, which also do well for the energy of the shot. She looks great, powerful, energetic. How could she do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't I don't know either. I just know that that scene forever will be instilled in me as one of the craziest, funnest you know, scariest scenes that I've ever shot because I knew that we could not get back into that apartment. I knew we could not get Hillary back. I knew that we couldn't get the production back. So to be able to pull off a scene like that, man, took a lot of work. And, you know, you being able to snap back into that independent mindset of just move the camera and get it done, light it. And sometimes what I've learned is when you don't think and you just act, you get some of the best work you've ever seen. Uh, it, you were right. Sometimes when you storyboard things and create all these beautiful lights and you, you know, and you have this pretty picture in, on paper, and then you actually get to the location and you go, no, nah, it needs to be like this. And I think that's what's yeah. really, really cool about independent filmmaking and just the beauty of filmmaking all at once. Um, so Dante, before we go, You've made some of the most incredible films that we have ever seen. Um, you have worked with some of the most prolific filmmakers that we have ever met and seen. When you look back on your work at times, um, do you ever see things that you feel like you should have done differently with some of these movies? Is there something where you go, man, I should have did this, even though the whole world is saying, this is incredible. Do you sometimes go, that light was wrong. You know, maybe, but the, the main thing is the way my work life came across is more like, you know, I moved from Italy, then I gave it a try, then I abandoned everything in Italy, came over to Carolina and Dino De Laurentiis, and I worked with Michael Mann and other directors and Bruce Beresford and so forth. If I look back, I said, hey, listen, I should have been way less anxious. I should have been more. <laughs> Uh, you know, forgetting. I mean, the whole operation of getting to know new crews, new people, new situations um, has some really positive sides. If I think that at the end of this, at the end, I mean, I don't know if it, but right now, the way I am right now, I have a chance of doing some amazing work with you. That's, you know, it's, and, and besides being amazing, it's also very pleasant. So I think it's more about that. It's much about not not you know tackling things without without anxiety without worrying uh, you know just enjoy and go for it and uh, this is probably a more critical thing than the aesthetic fact in itself or technical fact in itself you have to enjoy change you have to look for change and don't don't be afraid of obstacles yeah and I think what you just said is why me and you uh, have become so close I truly believe every word you just said and 
one thing I would give as advice to anyone that might be out here listening, that might, you know, catch me and you talking about film, talking about Fatal, is be adventurous and never be afraid to take a chance on yourself. Um, most don't know that I am a self-taught filmmaker. I never went to film school. I just kind of learned how to make film because I loved it. And um, life is very strange, man. Over the course of time, you just keep putting your heart into things and putting your passion into things. And eventually that boat of passion gets you to meet other people like yourself and you don't never know where you're gonna go. And uh, I've been very blessed, Dante, to know you. I've been very blessed to be able to work and make three films with you. And I wanted to tell you, thank you for that, man. You are a pioneer, uh, you're a legend. And uh, I am hopeful that everyone takes a moment to give you a bow and an applause because you definitely deserve it, man. I love you and thank you for a fatal. And uh, Academy member, thank you so much for watching us uh, ramble and talk and laugh. And uh, please, I hope you have an opportunity to see Fatal. And if you've seen it, thank you so much for supporting us and also for supporting independent film. Thank you so much. <laughs>